President Trump is taking a victory lap following his summit with North Korea's Kim Jong-un. On Twitter, the president said there is no longer a nuclear threat and said people should feel, quote, safer. He also said his experience meeting Kim Jong-un was, quote, very positive. The president also criticized what he said were efforts to downplay the statement he signed with North Korea. Critics say the president is far from having achieved a deal. They say he's simply at the start of a process with a country which has broken agreements in the past. Joining me now is Sabrina Siddiqui. She's a CBSN political contributor and a political reporter for The Guardian. She joins me now from Washington. All right, Sabrina, let's start with the president's summit with Kim Jong-un. How has the reaction differed from the deal that President Obama signed with Iran? Well, I think that both parties in Washington have been cautious about President Trump's summit with Kim Jong-un. It's somewhat uncharacteristic to see even Republicans expressing concerns about what has come of uh, Kim Jong-un's meeting with President Trump insofar as the substance is concerned. I, I do think that with President Obama, of course, you, you saw much more of a partisan breakdown in terms of the reaction to the Iran nuclear deal with Republicans saying outright uh, that he should not have even pursued negotiations. Uh, here you have uh, some skepticism on both sides of the aisle, in part because this is not the first administration to pursue a path toward denuclearization with North Korea. And it's not entirely clear what the specifics are of this tentative framework. And it's also not clear that Kim Jong-un is willing to dismantle and surrender North Korea's nuclear weapons program. So there's still a lot of uncertainty around the substance of a deal. And I think that you heard members of both parties warn the president against trusting Kim Jong-un. On another topic, Republican Senator Bob Corker tried to introduce a measure Tuesday that would have restricted the president's ability to impose tariffs on allies. He was blocked by members of his own party. This is what he said Wednesday in response to that. In a strange place. I mean, it's almost, uh, uh, you know, been a, it's becoming a cultish thing, isn't it? Um, and uh, it's, it's, uh, it's not a good place for any party to to end up with a cult-like situation as it relates to, uh, to, to a president that uh, happens to be of, purportedly of the, of the same party. I mean, Sabrina, that's a pretty forceful statement there from Senator Corker. What's been the reaction to that? Well, I think that Senator Bob Corker has ranked among the more vocal critics of President Trump. They certainly engaged in a fairly high-profile feud a few months ago after Senator Corker announced he would not seek re-election in Tennessee, uh, and he suggested amid his sparring with the president that the White House was effectively an adult daycare center. So uh, it's notable, of course, for him to now indict his own colleagues in assessing the way the Trump presidency has played out for the Republican Party. But I think he is speaking to what a lot of Republicans contend privately, that they have vast disagreements with this president. Uh, they certainly uh, continue to express a great deal of discomfort with his tone, with his penchant for controversy. Uh, but they, they don't see a political upside in uh, picking a fight publicly with the president, one, because they want his signature for their priorities in Congress, and two, because they are concerned that they might be primaried uh, or lose the general election in, in November's midterms because they don't have sufficient support from the Republican electorate, which by and large, and you saw evidence of this again in Tuesday night's primaries, uh, the Republican electorate by and large remains supportive of President Trump. And so I think that's the calculus for a lot of Republicans in Congress. Yeah, I mean, is Senator Corker essentially a cautionary tale for Republicans as to whether or not they should align with or distance themselves from the president heading into November? I think that Senator Bob Corker, as well as Senator Jeff Flake, uh, another vocal Trump critic, I mean, he wrote a whole book about his disagreements with Trump and, and announced he would not seek re-election in Arizona this year. Uh, they perhaps provide some cautionary tales uh, that it's really difficult to, on the one hand, try and uh, separate yourself as a conservative voice in Congress, but then pick and choose your battles with this president. You're either for him or you're against him in the eyes of many Republican voters. Uh, I, I do think, having said that, both Senator Flake and Senator Corker, they have overwhelmingly supported uh, the president's 
president's agenda as well as his nominees. And so when it comes to their voting records, you don't see a lot of discrepancy. I think a lot of it has to do with tone, uh, with governing style, and with the precedent that they believe this administration is setting uh, in, in being unconventional, to say the least. And of course, uh, we know the president has a penchant for creating controversy, so that's where you hear them speak out a lot more. On the topic of primary elections, Sabrina, Republican Mark Sanford lost his primary race in South Carolina. Sanford was a vocal critic of the president's. What does his loss say about the influence President Trump has on these congressional races? I think it was certainly striking that President Trump himself weighed in just hours before the polls were set to close in South Carolina and made a reference to uh, what Mark Sanford was once infamous for, uh, engaging in an extramarital affair when he was the governor of the state, um, which he sought to cover up. Eventually, of course, it was revealed. Um, and, and that, uh, I think, from Trump was sort of what we've come to see, uh, which is that this is a president who is not reluctant to attack members members of his own party, even if there are political ramifications uh, to be to be had. And I, I think that in some cases, establishment Republicans, they certainly wish that the president would hold his tongue, would not wade into these primaries, because what you've seen instead is quite a few candidates on the fringe who are trying to ride on President Trump's coattails, who are now emerging as victorious in these primaries, but who Republicans at a national level don't believe would be electable on the general ballot in November. Lastly, uh, Sabrina, I want to ask you about EPA Administrator Scott Pruitt. In a radio interview Wednesday, Oklahoma Senator James Inhofe said it may be time for Pruitt to, quote, leave that job. Does that suggest Pruitt might be on his way out? This is a notable development in part because so far Republicans have been reluctant to explicitly call on Scott Pruitt to resign. And I think that they have certainly expressed concerns, but there has been a reticence to get out ahead of the president who has still expressed support for Scott Pruitt publicly as recently as Friday, uh, where he suggested that some of the media coverage was unfair, even as the president conceded that he had some questions and concerns about Pruitt's conduct. I think that if you see more and more Republicans come out and say that Pruitt should go, that's where you run into more of a problem where it'll be difficult for the White House to ignore those calls. Certainly the question is whether or not the Republican-controlled Senate, where they have a very slim majority, would be able to confirm a replacement. And I think that's part of why Republican leaders, Mitch McConnell and others, have been reluctant to come out and call on Pruitt to resign. But this is indication that that could soon change because there is mounting frustration over the multiple uh, conflicts of interest questions and what appear to be a number of ethics violations that have been raised. Continue to watch it. Sabrina Siddiqui in Washington, always great to have you. Thank you so much, Thank Sabrina. You.